you guys okay if I preach from the piano a little bit this morning? So we've been in a series called Mind Games, and we've been talking about mental and emotional health, and I want to carry the series on uh, this week, and I want to focus on the power of singing and worship, how it affects your brain. So I want to title this message, Songs That Renew the Mind. Songs that renew the mind. Anybody need your mind renewed on a regular basis? Yeah. If we're really honest, all of us do, because crazy thoughts come, and you've got to learn how to cast them down and how to get your mind back on what's right, what's true, uh, what's healthy. And our church just released this new worship album, which is really good, by the way. I'm, I'm really excited about this album. I was listening to it, and I just thought, This is some of the best worship music I've heard lately. And the title of the album is called Faith. These are songs we wrote during the pandemic to combat fear um, and fears about, you know, shutdowns and viruses and people dying and all these things that were stirring up anxiety. These were songs that sprung forth from our church um, all about faith. And as I was studying this past week on worship, I didn't realize how much scientific research has been done specifically on the power of singing and how it affects the brain. And so um, this morning, we're gonna sing, we're gonna study scripture, we're gonna sing, we're gonna study scripture, and I think in the midst of it, your mind is gonna get renewed. You guys ready for it? Okay, so if you have a Bible, I want us to go to 1 Chronicles 16, 23. 1 Chronicles 16, 23 says, Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. In other words, don't just sing on Sunday, sing every day of the week. And when we do that, it's powerful what singing will do. There was a article that came out in Time Magazine in 2013, we're gonna throw the article up on the screen, Uh, but it says that singing actually changes the brain. And they said, uh, they've done research and study with people with Alzheimer's, people with all kinds of, you know, brain um, things, things where they needed to to get healthier in their brain, people with depression, anxiety, memory loss, that as they begin to sing, sing, sang, as they sang, (laughs) come on, some of y'all can sing, Um, as they begin to sing, uh, that it actually changed not only their brain, but their emotional landscape, their physical body. Um, And they said that They did studies on individuals singing by themselves. Like how many of y'all love to sing in your house, sing in the shower, even if you're not a good singer? Where's the people just, you just like to sing, right? Yeah, you'll sing in your car, you sing to the radio. You know those people that when you put on the radio, they literally are singing as loud or louder than the radio? You ever been in the car with those people? Is that your spouse, your kids, your mom? (laughs) I'm like, can can we listen to the radio? Um, (laughs) You know? sounds really good when they sing it, you know? Uh, But I I think there's power when we start singing these songs, and this is what the article says. It says that singing improves your mental alertness. It actually brings more oxygen and blood to your brain. Uh, For people with dementia, it improves your concentration and your (laughs) memory recollection. (laughs) Singing uh, boosts your immune system. It it, uh, improves your mental health. And so I wanna give you just a few things that they said in the article that happen uh, when you sing and when you worship. And they said specifically singing in a large group with people. This is why I love singing as a church. This is why Paul said, do not neglect the gathering together and worshiping and meeting together as a church as the day approaches for the Lord to return. Y'all, when we gather together, not only is it powerful that we experience the presence of God, it actually boosts your immune system. It makes you stronger against COVID. It makes you stronger against the virus. Singing in a large group, oh goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit on this right now. The reason why Fauci and all these people who who are telling us what we need to do in the CDC, they need to have a revelation. There are spiritual principles that affect the anatomy, the brain, the, the, the lungs. And I'm telling you, Stanford, Harvard, they've done the research. Singing in a large group of people actually makes you stronger against sickness and disease in the heart and in the lungs. Where is the virus attacking? It's attacking the lungs. 
So the first thing they say is stop singing. They actually made a commandment in California, stop singing. The very thing that can bring health and healing is where the enemy is attacking the most. If he can steal the church's praise, if he can shut down our, 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 our worship, then he can stop us from getting stronger. But I'm looking at a church that refuses to shut up, a church that refuses to shut down, and a church that refuses to be quiet. Come on, give God praise this morning. Tell the devil he loses. When we sing, and not just singing, because singing, singing is great, but it's singing the word of God. Singing is powerful. Singing, singing in itself, without just singing scripture, actually does affect the brain. It says it stimulates your immune response. Uh, we're gonna put that list up there. It relieves stress, it lowers your cortisol in your bloodstream. This is why it's so good to sing. It's so good to sing, y'all. You don't have to be a good singer to sing. You don't even have to be able to hit a note. Just let something out of your mouth. We got people doing it all the time here at church, and I love it. Keep on doing it. Some of y'all are like, I don't know. They need to, they need to sing a little quieter. It's, it's distracting at times. But, but listen, when we sing, it increases your pain threshold. Go ahead and keep that screen up there. Um, it improves your lung function. It gives you a sense of belonging and connection. When you're singing in a group of people, it helps your emotional landscape. It helps you feel like you're part of a family when you're singing with other people. It enhances your memory. It helps fight against dementia. Um, it, it helps with grief. If, if you've lost a loved one, if you've lost a job, if you've gone through divorce, singing actually helps you get through the grieving process, not just faster, but healthier. Um, it improves your mental health and your overall mood. Your attitude gets better when you sing. Now, again, it's singing the right lyrics, right? Because when you got the wrong song stuck in your head, that can mess your mood up. <laughs> but when you got the right song stuck in your head, songs that renew the mind, it actually improves your mood. I know this is kind of a different sermon this morning, me sitting on the piano, but um, I think we just need to switch things up every now and then. Are you guys cool with that? Okay. Um, it, it helps improve your speaking abilities. So there was a movie that came out a while back called The King's Speech. And it was all about um, the king of England, how he had a, a stuttering problem. He couldn't speak and was afraid to speak in front of people. And he had a coach that was trying to teach him how, how public speaking, uh, how to get better at public speaking. <laughs> I feel like I need a coach sometimes <laughs> to get better at public speaking. But one of the practices that helps people get more confident to speak better is singing. Uh, that singing actually improves your ability to speak if you're stuttering. Um, singing and, and worship boost your self-esteem. Listen, the reason why David had the courage to attack Goliath was most likely because he was a worshiper. Because he would sing in the fields. He would sing to his sheep, right? Mm, when I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I fall asleep, counting my blessings. Don't a deer, a female deer, rain a drop. Me, fuck. So a needle pulling, love a note to follow. So. Tea, a drink with jam and bread, and that will bring us back to do, do, do. When you know the notes to sing, come on, sound of music, you can sing. I don't think David was singing that out in the fields, but he was probably writing these songs. In fact, it says, I'm gonna give, can I hit you guys with some scriptures teaching on the power of worship? All right, so David would be out in the fields, and if singing and worship boosts your self-esteem, but it also boosts your, God, your, your, God, <laughs> your Godfidence, right? Your confidence in the Lord. The reason why David had the courage to attack Goliath was most likely because he was worshiping God and it was boosting his confidence in what God could do through him, what God could do in him. While people were running in fear, David was running with faith. And worship produces faith. And so um, in Psalms 100, 
verse 1, David says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Let all the earth give praise to God, right? Worship is a commandment. It's not a suggestion. God doesn't command us to worship because he's insecure. Like God's not up in heaven going, ah, I really feel insecure today. I, I hope Victory Church sings me some songs and talks about me on Instagram. I'm really battling self-esteem issues. God doesn't have a, a narcissist problem. He's not obsessed with himself saying, I need you to worship me. God understands that worship actually helps us more than it helps him. That when I'm worshiping him, it's doing all of these things for my body, for my brain, for my overall health. It's shifting my mind off of problems, off of burdens, off of worries, and onto the one who can sustain me, who can heal me, who can set me free. So 68 times in the book of Psalms, he says, sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord. Why? Because singing changes the brain. Singing opens the heart up to receive. Y'all, worship is not filler time before the sermon. Worship is the sermon. Worship is just as important as the message. So I don't show up to church late thinking, well, I'm only coming for the sermon. And I don't leave church early going, I'm only coming for the songs. I need all of it together because the worship and the word together combined can change my whole body, change my mind, change my perspective, change my outlook on life, how I handle what's going on in America, in Afghanistan, in my own home, with my kids, with, with, with life, with work, with all of it. We need it. So Paul the Apostle, he says this in Colossians 3. He says, let the message, I want to look at verse 16 specifically. He says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. All right, so he says, let the message stick in your heart. Let the message get stuck in your head. And how does it get stuck in your head? He says, through psalms, hymns, and songs. A song gets stuck in our head way more than a sermon gets stuck in our head. If you ask me what all the speakers preached on last week at conference, <laughs> they were great sermons. I could open up my journal and then I could try to remember, you know, what Bishop Jake said and Alex Seeley and John Bevere and Craig Rochelle. I just, I, the really the only thing I remember is Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them. So let's just, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, nod your head. Anyways, there's songs that get stuck in my head, way more than sermons. And Imagine if we were to, what Paul the Apostle was saying here, I think he was on to something, Colossians 3, 16. He's tying together the sermon and the worship. He's saying, imagine if you wrote a worship song that backed up everything that was in the sermon. And let's say you're preaching a sermon on faith and you need people to catch this message of Christ. You want it to dwell deeply in their spirit. Keep that scripture up there. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, okay? Imagine that we were doing a sermon series called Faith in the Wild. You guys remember when we did that sermon series last year? And, and imagine that we need people to walk away from the message and remember what does it look like to have faith? So this is what our team did. They went into the studio and they began to write songs of faith because a song gets stuck in your head way more than a sermon does. And if you can get a song with the right scriptures and the right lyrics, people start repeating it over and over in their mind. I believe that greater things are in front of me. I believe he's the God of miracles. I believe by faith he moves mountains. By faith he parts the seas. By faith miracles are happening. By faith, even when I can't see it, I know he's working. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. So our team started writing songs based on the sermons and the scriptures so it would get stuck in our hearts and in our minds. And when we do that, it changes everything. It changes everything. I want to give you just a few thoughts on worship, and then we're going to sing together. All right, so worship is a commandment, not a suggestion, but worship is also a choice. I get to choose what I'm going to worship. Worship is going to happen. Worship is going to happen. It happens every day. You may not realize it, but it's happening. Anytime you adore something or someone, anytime that you give your reverence, your awe, your wonder, your honor, that's worship. So if you like somebody and you, you're crushing on them, you're giving them all that attention, that focus, that's worship. Uh, if you like a sports team and you paint your belly for the OU Sooners and you scream, boom, her, that's worship, right? That's worship. Worship is going to happen. 
but we get to choose what we're gonna worship. And if you don't worship God, eventually you start worshiping yourself. We are never more like Lucifer than when we stop worshiping God. The reason why Satan fell from heaven, he was an angel at first, he was the worship leader. He was the archangel. We did it last year at, at, at the Easter production. We showed the depiction of Lucifer worshiping in heaven and then he was cast down because he exalted himself above God. He chose not to worship God, he chose to worship himself. And when you don't worship God, eventually you start sliding into a self-worship, exalting your problems, your worries, your fears, uh, your feelings, what you're going through, poor me, I need more attention, I need this, I need that, I'm not happy. But when I'm worshiping God, I'm a more thankful person, I'm a more humble person, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm able to get through pain better, I'm able to get through grieving better. When I worship God, it changes me. That's the third part, worship changes me. Turn to someone next to you and say, worship changes you. But what is worship? Is worship just attending church? Is it lifting our hands? Is it giving in the offering? Is it loving your neighbor? It's all of that. Jesus said in John chapter four, I'm looking for worshipers who will worship me in spirit and in truth. So I want them to sing. I want them to lift their hands. I want them to clap. I'm so glad we go to a church that's lively, right? We sing, we dance, we jump, we clap. Come on, give God praise this morning. We're not a dead church. We're a loud church. But worship changes my heart. Worship changes the atmosphere. There's been times in my life where I've been discouraged and I've come home and I've said, Ashley, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling discouraged about something, feeling like, no one understands this. And what she can't do, God can do. And what your spouse can't do, what your kids can't do, what no counselor can do, God's presence can do. What the vaccine can't do, God's presence can do. And so we'll put on worship music. We'll turn on a song that just renews our minds, songs that get our minds fixed on the goodness of God. Worship shifts my focus on God over my problems and over my feelings. And lastly, worship is a weapon. You guys ready to battle this morning? Let's worship. And what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. And you have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the Yours is the name above all names. How great is our God. Won't you sing with me? How great is our God. And all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. He's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. He's worthy, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, Lord. How great is our God. Come on, do you feel better just singing to the Lord this morning? Well, y'all could be seated and we'll stand and worship whenever you feel like it, you feel free to stand. I wanna sing some of the songs that have just come through our church on this new faith album because I believe they're, they're important for this hour for our church. One of the first songs on the album is a song from Psalm 139 and it's when David was crying out to the Lord and he had gone through a lot of personal problems, feelings of insecurity, wondering if, you know, 
if God's presence was still gonna be there. Um, and he literally said the words, God, if I made my bed in hell, even there your presence finds me. And he wasn't talking about literal hell. He was talking about something that would be extremely bad in the earth, something that would be very painful, a season that would be very difficult. He says, no matter where I go, I can't hide from your presence. Your love chases me down on my worst day and on my best day. In other words, the goodness of God is not contingent on the goodness of man. We worship God because he's good, not because we're good. I'm gonna say that again. We worship God because he's good, not because we're good. So I don't lift my hands to the Lord saying, look how good I've been. I read my Bible today. I'm such a good Christian. No. I, I worship because I go, God, I need you. Lord, I trust you. And so this song came out of that scripture and it just goes like this. I could climb the highest mountain or even walk the lowest valley, but there is no escaping your love. I could not escape from your love. Even in the darkness, you are there. Both the night and day, I sing to you. There is no escaping your love. I cannot escape from your love. You formed me in my mother's womb. Your thoughts and plans for me are good. You wrote my story from the start. Your love is written on my heart. And you know every part of who I am. There is not a secret you don't see. Nothing is hidden from your sight. And I am always on your mind. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. How many of you guys are glad that his thoughts are not your thoughts? That's good, because some of y'all's thoughts are crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if God was thinking what you're always thinking? <laughs> about, your, about your kids sometimes, or your spouse, or President Biden, or uh, the government, or the vaccine, or Fauci, or those people, I don't know. I'm so thankful that God's thoughts can renew my thoughts. That's what David said, Lord. He says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Uh, when I want revenge, you teach me how to forgive. When I'm angry, you teach me how to be peaceful. Uh, when I'm stressed, you teach me how to trust in you. When I'm anxious, when my thoughts are, are running in all sorts of directions and I'm overplaying and overanalyzing everything in my head, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your thoughts renew me. And there was this part in the song where I just, I, I needed to speak it over my own life when we were writing this. And it just goes like this. Um, your presence, it surrounds me. Your love is never failing. I know you'll never leave. Your goodness follows me. I praise you. I praise you. Your presence, it surrounds me. Even though enemies around me, Lord, your love is never failing. Even when the world forsakes me, Lord, I know you'll never leave. Your goodness follows me. I praise you. I praise you, and the one who names the stars, he wrote my story, the one who heals my scars, all for his glory, your mercies fill my heart, the new every morning, I praise you, I praise you. And even in this, I will see your goodness. And even in this, I will see your goodness. Through the darkness, through the trials, Lord, even in this, I will see
How many of you are thankful that you could see the goodness of God, even in a tough time? Our friend Avery wrote that song and just singing through the, the pandemic that no matter what's going on around us, again, we're talking about songs that can renew our mind, no matter what's going on around us, that the goodness of God is still there, even in this, and that nothing is impossible. How many are believing for a miracle of some kind in your family, your health, your, your situations you're going through, that nothing is impossible? And when you're in a disappointing season, it's actually a setup for God to move in your life. Your disappointment makes room for God to show up, makes room for God to fill that. A friend Jeremiah wrote this song for our team called Solid Ground. Um, when his family and him were separated during the pandemic, uh, they're, they're in the United Kingdom in England. His dad pastors a church, and uh, the restrictions in England were much more intense than here over churches especially. And um, he was kind of battling fear and battling, you know, shaky ground with his family, trying to figure out what's going to happen. They wanted him to fly home, and he couldn't go back home. Um, and so these words came right here. And all things are possible. Nothing's too difficult for you. Your words unshakable. He's your solid ground, no matter what's going on in your life. The next song I want to show you is a song called By Faith that Sam wrote during our Faith in the Wild series. And um, we've sang it here many times, but I want you to get this stuck in your head, these lyrics right here. I believe I receive it, even when my eyes can't see it, the evidence of things unknown. Jesus, you're my only hope. I believe greater things are right in front of me. Nothing is impossible. You're the God of miracles. I believe I receive it. Even when my eyes can't see it, the evidence of things unknown. Jesus, you're my only hope. I believe Greater things are right in front of me. Nothing is impossible. You're the God of miracles. By faith the seas were parted. By faith the mountains moved. By faith healing will happen. I feel it in this room. By faith I'll see the promise, by faith the walls come down, by faith you're resurrecting, I feel it all around. By faith the seas were parted, by faith the mountains move, by faith By faith the walls come down, by faith I'm resurrecting, I feel it all around. 
There was a song that I started writing a while back and I finished it during the pandemic and I was in my house, it was storming outside um, and I was thinking about all the reasons to be afraid. Uh, we were really just as a church taking a stand against fear, um, especially in the beginning of the pandemic. And, and I was thinking about, I actually sang this song in the first month of the pandemic because I could just feel fear was gripping our, our world, our nation, our city. I mean, we were all out of toilet paper at the grocery stores. <laughs> People were losing their minds about toilet paper. I don't know what happened to all of it, but, but, but it was gone. And, and I came into the church by myself, sat at the piano, and I just, I started singing these words. Um, and the, the song kind of came together. And it's just called, No Need to Fear. There's no need to fear no need to worry cause my God's still here and his love surrounds me fear you can't stay my father's love surrounds me oh fear you don't belong here cause my heart has found its anchor so I won't be afraid I won't be discouraged cause my God's with me and he gives me courage fear you can't stay here cause my father's love surrounds me go ahead sing it out Oh, fear, you don't belong here, cause my heart has found its anchor, and there's no need to fear, no need to worry, cause my God's still His love surrounds me. First John 4, 18 says, perfect love casts out all fear. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. When I get this song stuck in my head, it's like I'm telling fear, get out. You don't belong in my brain. I'm serving an eviction notice. You're not a good tenant, and you haven't been taking care of the space I've been giving you in my head. And I'm kicking fear out. And I'm saying, Lord, I wanna, I wanna have faith, I wanna have power, love, and a sound mind. I'm fixing my mind on the goodness of God, the love of God, the protection of God, the grace of God. We're talking about songs that renew your mind. And um, y'all remember when, when the World Trade Centers fell and, and, and uh, the terrorist attack? One of the first things that happened after that was people started writing songs about it. Um, and I mean, there was country songs written about it. There was Christian songs written about it. I know Michael W. Smith wrote a song, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Uh, uh, there was Brooks and Dunn. I mean, there were so many different songs that were written about that moment because it's important to remember something. It's important for us to remember how we felt in a moment, how we got through something. It's important for us to remember how we got here as a church. And so this, this uh, last year, I thought, you know, we need to write a song about the faithfulness of God through all the, the, the mountaintops and valleys that our churches walk through. And so um, that's where Isn't He Faithful came from. And it's a song that I think we should sing to our kids and to our kids' kids as a church. And it just goes like this. And isn't he faithful through the ages? Isn't he faithful through the storms? Isn't he faithful through the changes? Isn't he faithful through it all? And 
When I look back on my life, I see the evidence of you and all that your faithfulness and Jesus has brought me through. I remember you taking us out to see that empty field and you said, what do you see, my kids? I said, Dad, it's just a field. But you said, I see a dream inside of me, bursting at the seams. I see victory. I see a church in me. And isn't he faithful through the ages? Isn't he faithful through the storms? Isn't he faithful through the changes? Isn't he faithful? Through it all, and when I look back on my life, I see the evidence of you and all that your faithfulness, Jesus, has brought us through. I remember the hospital room the night that you passed. I remember staring at the monitor, looking at a straight line, waiting for a miracle. I didn't see that night see it that night but I remember the voice that spoke to me in that place saying son I know you're hurting but everything's gonna be okay just you wait there'll be a day when all of your tears are wiped away and you'll see victory I'm seeing victory isn't he faithful through the ages? Isn't he faithful through the loss? Isn't he faithful through the changes? Isn't he faithful through it all? And when I look back on my life, I see the fingerprints of God and all that your faithfulness, Jesus, has brought us through. There was a song that came to our team um, when there was a lot of turmoil and, and political uproar in January and, and our nation was trying to just figure out how to get along. And um, I think our nation's still trying to figure out how to get along. But this song is on the album and it's just a reminder that he's still on the throne. It just goes like this. You're still faithful, you're still in control. You're still able, you still got alone. Your kingdom can't be shaken or overthrown. You're still good, you still got, you still holy, and still on the throne. And people come and go, but you're still on the throne. Nations rise and fall, but you're still on the throne. Kings and crowns will fade, you're still on the throne. Seasons always change, you're still on the throne. You stand throughout the ages, still on the throne. And when the storm is raging, you're still You're still on the throne, oh, come what may, I know, you're still on the throne. Your kingdom can't be shaken or overthrown. You're still good, you're still God, you're still holy, and still on the throne. Come on, he's still on the throne, church. There was this moment in First Chronicles, when Jehoshaphat and the Israelites, they were facing enemies on every side. They were overwhelmed, discouraged, didn't have a chance to win. And a prophetic word came to King Jehoshaphat. And the prophetic word was, send the worshipers out in front of your, your army and let the worship go first. And as you sing and worship, it's going to cause chaos and confusion on your enemies. When we worship, oh my goodness, when we worship, when we sing, when we fix our attention on God, 
it confuses the enemy. It confuses what the enemy's plotting to do against your body, your mind, your emotions, your health. You are in your clearest brain when you are worshiping God. The fog lifts. The fear has to go. Satan loses his power. Lucifer craves worship. So when you worship God, it's like you're spitting in Satan's face, saying you don't win. Anger, you don't win. Pride, you don't win. Fear, you don't win. And so we're gonna end today. I want you to stand your feet all over this place. We're gonna end today with one last song. And it's the, the, the song at the end of the album called When I Speak Your Name. And uh, we put a testimony on the album from our friend Ashley Anspa, who was in the hospital. She had coded on the table. The doctors had pronounced she was dead. Uh, they kept her hooked up to a machine. She was able to keep her lungs still functioning, but she was completely brain dead. And I went into the hospital room with the family and they said, what do we do? We, we, feel, like, we feel like there's no hope. You know, our hope is in God, but it just looks like this is it. And I said, let's pray and let's worship. And there was this song that had just kind of birthed out of our church called When I Speak Your Name, that the name of Jesus carries resurrection power. And during conference, Ashley's body began to respond. She began moving her feet, her eyes, her body. Then all of a sudden she opened her eyes up and she just started worshiping God. It was a miracle. Not only is Ashley alive and well, she's teaching again in the school. She's functioning. She has all 100% of her entire memory, her mind, her emotions, her body is completely healed. And I don't know if maybe you have loved ones that are in the hospital right now. You know, I was on the phone this past week with people who said, man, this, this virus is real, Pastor. Please pray for our family members, our friends. They're battling sickness, and, and I believe it. I see it. I recognize the power of this virus, this sickness. But we also serve a greater power. And I believe that as we worship, we're releasing the healing power of Jesus. We're releasing even just victory over situations that you're facing right now. If you need your mind renewed or your heart renewed, you're here this morning, you just need to get your lips releasing praise and worship. And you just say, man, I just need to get my, my mind renewed, my heart renewed. There's things I'm walking through, there's burdens I'm carrying. I want you to leave your seat. Come and meet me at this altar. As Jehoshaphat put the worshipers out in front, they watched as the enemies that were coming to take them down actually turned on each other. They won the victory through their worship. Worship is a weapon against discouragement, against depression, against chaos, against fear, against the confused mind, against problems at home. Worship is a weapon in your apartment. It's a weapon right there on the other side of that computer screen, TV screen. Worship is a weapon. And as we sing this song, I want you to go to war. I want you to go to war in your heart against whatever it is the enemy's been messing with you on. If you wanna leave your seat, come and meet us at this altar. Maybe you're here today and you say, man, I'm not right with God. I need to get right with God. There is sin in my life. I need forgiveness. I need a fresh start. You come and join us today. Today is the day of salvation. Today's the day of mercy. Today's the day of forgiveness. Today's the day to get your mind back, get your emotions back, get your heart back. And let's just begin to renew our minds with these songs of praise. When I speak your name, darkness has to flee. Name, darkness has to flee. When I speak your name, I have authority. When I speak your name, when I speak your name mountains have to move. Mountains have to move. When I speak your name, chains will break up. Every knee 
will bow. Every president, every prime minister, every king, every queen, every leader has to bow. Every sickness has to bow. Everybody has to bow. Worthy are you, Jesus. Every knee will bow. or doubt, speak the name of Jesus over that sickness, over that problem, over that worry, over that burden, over that financial need, over that thing that you're afraid about, over that thing you're not sure about. Say Jesus. He's my healer. He's my redeemer. He's my shepherd. He's my best friend. Jesus, 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 he's renewing your mind right now, Jesus, Jesus, he hasn't given you fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, sound mind, he's renewing your heart right now, say Jesus, Jesus, he's fighting your battles, He's going before you and behind you. He surrounds you with his love. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now for my friends, my family. God, I pray, Lord, for whatever situation they're singing over right now. You know what's going on in their hearts, their homes, their minds. God, I pray, Lord, for healing. I pray for grace. I pray for your renewal in their mind. God, I pray this week for those who haven't gotten good sleep, that as they worship you, God, you're gonna give them good rest. Lord, for those who've been attacked in their immune system, as they worship you, God, it's gonna boost their immune system. It's gonna strengthen, God, their, their, their mind. It's gonna strengthen their lungs. It's gonna strengthen their nose, their throat. It's gonna strengthen their ears, their eyes, their heart, their blood pressure. God, I pray for the cortisol levels to go down, the stress to go down. I pray, Lord, for faith to be produced, confidence. God, I pray for those who've just been struggling to, to just go to work, to have the energy throughout the day, that as they worship you, that it's gonna re-energize them, God, at work. It's gonna do more for them than what coffee does. It's gonna do more for them than what, what some uh, 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 vitamins might do. Lord, I pray that as they worship, it would strengthen them through the day. It would strengthen them through the day. I wanna invite us to pray this morning. If you're here today and you, you're committing your life to Christ, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here and you're saying, I need to repent, I need to get right with God, I need Jesus to be Lord of my life, just raise your hand. Today's a new day for you. We celebrate that, sir. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Come on, today's a fresh day for people's, people's stories. They're getting saved. 
The angels go wild when one sinner repents. I want us all to pray this prayer together. Say, Jesus, I surrender. I'm all yours. I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You are the son of God. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of sin. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me, renewing my mind, giving me the gift of worship, the weapon of worship, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to worship you every day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love you, Victory. God bless you.